in all of the Denver Nuggets' entire Jokic era. Honestly, I'm not being that crazy to say it. You had an opportunity, you're up 20 points, and you give that effort in the second half. This was a total F around and find out game. The Nuggets f around. They found out. I got Brendan Vogt in the house. Yeah, I'm actually a bit stunned, fellas. Did not think this was the show we were going to have, not just throughout the day, but throughout most of that game. And even right up until the five minute mark, maybe even lower. But here we are, and it's not one to just brush off. Real consequences to this one. Real consequences. Then over here we got D-Line Co. Uh, good week. Wrong score up there, by the way. And then also we've got Harrison Wynn. I'm surprised you're on the show, D-Line. I'm, I'm surprised you're sitting next to me. I couldn't leave my brothers, but goddamn, I couldn't. I couldn't leave you guys. But <laughs> I don't want to be here. I'll be honest. I don't blame you. Um, all right. Well, shall we get into the fast breakdown here? Let's get there. Um, I mean, honestly, this one almost doesn't feel like it deserves one. Here's the fast breakdown. The Nuggets were up big. Yeah. The Nuggets were up really big, and Jokic was taking over the game in the first half. Third quarter, Jamal Murray, or second quarter, Jamal Murray got into his bag. Yoke and Murray two-man game was a thing of beauty. The Nuggets were up 68 to 50 at halftime, and they extended it. Then they extended it in the third quarter, but the Spurs stormed back in the fourth. Wemby, in the second half, Wemby took it to Yoke. There was a turning point in this game, and it was a tangle up between Aaron Gordon and Victor Wimbanyama. It was almost a reverse of the Paul Millsap. You know, I know it was a playoff game, but they get you know get up into each other. Who knows what's going on? Wimbanyama gets up and gets pissed goes into hyperdrive and dominates the game. It's, I think when B heard you guys talking shit about his game from uh, the well, he was hit, over He had a bunch of threes. When you say you guys, who, who do you mean? I'll, Just you guys in general. I'll still. I, hold I, on, I, hold I, on, hold on, hold on. Don't, I'll, don't, I'll, don't, I'll don't. still, I'll still. My, when B was a minus 11. When B had 35, 15, what was it? He was 35? a minus 11. I mean, come on. 35, 5, five and 4. He was a minus so 4. So he had a bunch of He was a minus three 4, by the way. He was a minus 4, not a minus 11. You got to refresh. Mm. Um... But again, against Yoke, that's a monster game. He got pissed. He took over. The Ugh. Nuggets then, like, the starters have to check back in. And they create a separation right away. Like, they get it back up to 10, and you think, okay, here's how you do it. But just nonchalance down it's, the it's, close it, of this it. game. Arrogance, petulance, playing exactly with fire, it. and they got burned so bad. That's what are exactly the consequences? It. The one seed was theirs. They did it last game against the Wolves. They got it. All you got to do is beat two tanking teams. You're up 20 points. They cough that up. Both the Thunder and the Wolves lose. The Nuggets are now the three seed, and more likely than not to not be the one seed. Equal odds at the moment probably to be the two, two or the three seed. Unbelievable fumbling by Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Harrison, what's your Red Hawk roofing big takeaway? This was just an immature second half played by the Nuggets. It was... I can't believe they were the immature team against a team full of I know. puppies. Literal immature. People, That's yeah. what makes it so damning. And, like, you should be so pissed off at this team because that was embarrassing, man. Yeah. That was embarrassing. You had to close out the Spurs. You were up 20 points in the third quarter. You just had to play okay. And the Nuggets... They let their foot off the gas. I mean, you can point to a number of things. The rebounding, they got out rebounded 49 to 32 in this game. And that's just effort. That's all that is. That's just a lack of effort. Nicole Jokic, for some reason, only took six shots after the first quarter. He took seven in the first quarter, then proceeded to take six shots the rest of the way. 
That was weird. Michael Porter Jr., just a low effort game, I thought. The bench was fine, actually. I don't think the bench really deserves much blame for this one, but this was just the type of um, the type of casual, like soft performance that the Nuggets should never have. Like the Spurs should be the ones folding at this point in the season. You know, this was actually really damaging to them. <laughs> it was. It yeah. really was. Honestly, yeah. this cost them. Positioning, I think for two teams, I think they also go from the three seed to the five in the Tankathon standings now. So it was horrible. And, and you would just think that, you know, this team, with knowing what's at stake, with the leadership, the trials and tribulation that they've been through, they would have been able to come together and stop what was happening in the second half. For some reason, they just didn't want to. D-Line, what's your Red Hawk roofing big takeaway? First off, Wemby was a minus 11. I've refreshed several times. And I checked two different sites. Anyway, uh, that sucked. Wait, did you think Wemby was bad tonight? No. That's, but he was also a minus like, 11. Well, well, that was all in the first half, I think. Well, but Adam scolded me for not refreshing my stats. So oh, you're right. He was a minus 11. Yeah, I was a minus 11. Yeah. Anyway. Um, 34, 12, just, 5, 1, and 2. Just, you know, like... Fuck around and find out. You said it. That's exactly it. The Nuggets just got in. They just got casual. They had it in the bag. They were messing around. They weren't playing any defense at all. The Spurs got really hot from three. And, you know, like players that just don't want to, like, they, they don't care. They're just letting it fly. Like, what's it? I can't even pronounce his name. Mama, Mafa. You can say Mama. Sandro. You can Sandro, say Mama if it helps. Sandro cooked them. Like, a lot of like the, almost all of the Spurs just like they were like just playing for fun and they just hitting shots and the Nuggets were like okay whatever. Um, I can, still can't believe that happened. I can't believe that Jokic missed a uh, game winner essentially. Like I, they they just got to that place where like oh fuck we gotta like turn it back on and it was too late. Um, I'm devastated. I really am just absolutely devastated. The Their odds this. of the you title go down yeah. from this now almost certainly in a second round. You're going to have to go on the road now and play one of these teams that we talked like. Denver could play Minnesota now in the second round of the playoffs. Right. They could go to Minnesota and play or, you know, or play them even in the 2-3. There's a real possibility now that that's your second round matchup. It's just, it is a super expensive loss they it just had. Totally. And, and, like, if the Nuggets weren't in this position, just personally, like, I'd be okay with them getting the 2 or 3 seed. I yeah. don't think it's the end of the world. It's not. But the fact that the number one seed was right there. It was gift wrapped to them. The best. They did the work already. It's true. This was the easy part these last two games. The fact that it was right there for the taking um, is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, my big takeaway was just the def just defense. They just, just didn't play it. Deeply unserious. And I'll go to Porter specifically because I'm very quick to sing his praises. He was horrible in this game. Defend like he didn't make good shots, didn't have high energy, but defensively he was really bad. And he was not alone in that. I thought honestly, even some of the guys that played well offensively tonight were not good defensively. I didn't outside of Peyton trying to block a few shots, there wasn't a ton of urgency from Denver on that end. And it cost him. And look, I like can Denver win this title from any one of the top three seeds? Yes, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. But I'm not gonna lie. Does will one seed matter against Minnesota? I sure think so. I would not the one seed, but home, home court, court is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, and you just did all that work. You just did all that, and this was not even work, right? This was like work just a little harder than you just did to preserve all that hard work you just did, and and they just didn't, and it's that's that's disappointing. Even if they go on to win the title, we won't care about this moment. But it is still like it's it's frustrating. Like Wynn said, it's almost when it's that close, you almost stop debating whether you should or shouldn't. Just go get it. It's that yeah. close. Vote. Do the Nuggets want to play the Pelicans in the first round? <laughs> Do the Nuggets want the three seed? Because that second half looked like they threw it. I know, man. It looked like they threw are this you being, game. Are you be, you're being tongue in cheek here. I mean, yes, but. Like, that was such a despicable second-half effort. It looked like a team that doesn't want the one seed. How do you not want the one seed? You know what I mean? Like, there's a, some, there's a thing to your There's lower, a sense of pride with the one seed. But there's also a sense of, like, you're not the reigning champ, so, oh, the three is better than two because the matchup or this or that. 
You're the reigning champs, and it's the one seed. Just go get yeah. it. Yeah. Like, oh, we're right afraid there. of the second no, round. Like, like, I'm man. sure they don't not want the one seed. You I, should. I think they just lost this one. And my Red Hawk roofing big takeaway. I hate it. This is my first time going here all year. It took till game 81 for me to go here. I think it's on Jokic. I think it's on Jokic. Not because he played the worst. He did not play the worst. Yeah, he just checked but, out. But the team follows the cue. I'm sorry. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Oh, yeah. He, the team follows his cue. And for whatever reason, he didn't want the smoke with Victor Wimbanyama tonight. He did like I don't know what it was. He dominated him earlier. You know you can do this. Dominate. And then he just takes his foot off the gas pedal. Kind of shows that it's okay to take your foot off the gas pedal. Meanwhile, Victor Wimbanyama's draining three, screaming. Like Vic is trying to it almost seems performative the way Wemby plays. Like he wants to show you that he's not afraid. He wants to show you that I'm emotional and I'm not just a typical, you know, uh, rookie or whatever, like I'm, I'm here to show you that I, he, he's making all, a show of it. And Yoke just let him. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, D line. When we kicked Yoke's ass tonight in the second half, kicked his ass. It has been a long time since we've seen Jokic get his ass kicked, and it happened by a 19 year old. And, and like, Yoke did seem to be interested in stopping it. And then at the end of the game, it's like, all right, Yoke, you got to win this one for us because now we've, we've left right. around. Gets his shot blocked, misses a jumper. That's how Yoke finished this game. I'm so pissed at him because he does. He, we know when Yoke gets tired, he seems to get a little more fussy, a little bit like he'll yell at refs, he'll get a attack, he'll do these different things. Um, tonight, he looked like he went into emotional funk in the second half. I don't know if he was upset with how the team was playing, got frustrated watching some of the dumb plays of some of the younger bench players or what have you. But it almost is like, yeah, but Yoke, it's game 81. Like, th that's. Do that in game 10, you're pissed then. This is game 81, nothing matters other than checking the W at the end, and that guy at the other side is screaming in your ear that he's not afraid of you, and you just let the one seed fall out because you didn't want the challenge for some reason. To me, Yoke is so near perfect that when he has nights like this, it's jarring. It's like watching your dad get beat up. You're like, oh my God, what just happened? Our king just got beat up by a 19 year old and it cost the one seed. I'm pissed, man. I think all Nuggets Nation is, is pissed. They should be. I mean, Denver shot 13 of 36 from three. It's too many threes. It's not who this team is. And a lot of those were just like Nikola Jokic kickouts. And for some reason, like I said in my big takeaway, he only shot the ball seven times after the first quarter. Shot six times in the first quarter. And, yeah, I agree. He did not want the smoke tonight. This this game, to me, almost reminds me of why the Nuggets don't have win streaks. Because win streaks require, like, a monotonous focus. You know, like, it just it takes this, yeah, but you just got to win some nights. And that's all it needed tonight. They had it right there, but they just didn't have it in them. But also, even that stuff is all true and salient and relevant. And even still... There are three or four open shots from their three best players in the final five minutes that they just missed. And I'm not, like Murray, who was on fire all night and all, the best nugget by a lot tonight, missed an open three. Jokic missed the game winner. Porter missed an open three from the quarter. Like, so he, even for all of that, they still just, the shots were there and they didn't hit them. And it's, I mean, look, I don't. But here's the thing, vote. You know when they shot well? Against the Timberwolves, you know why they were dialed in. I agree. The yes. intensity they were and focus the was right there. Way. I agree. And they this. were just focused on this, like it's a dogfight tonight. There was this level, and again, what makes it especially frustrating is Jokic in particular was having a guy that was trying to send a statement against him. Even last game, I thought Vic was trying to go at him. Like Vic Definitely. has a competitor spirit to him that I actually really appreciate. This idea of Yoke's the best, and I want to go at him, and I'm just going to go at him. And tonight, Yoke was like, just let him. And that's what's so annoying. It's annoying that he did this. What, what I don't get, though, is like, what happens in the second half is happening. You call a timeout, you go back to the huddle. I'm sure Michael Malone is reminding them what's at stake in this game. Yeah. How does nothing change? How do you just walk back out there and the same shit continues to happen? Arrogance. There was an, there was How an arrogance How does that tonight. happen with this team in game 81 of the season? What? Um, this is a wild one. This is like the most shocking loss. Yeah, dude. In a long time. I mean, I don't remember the last time I was this surprised. Right. Because they just didn't. They just, just didn't do it. They just figured they had it, and they still should have. That's the wildest thing. They just. I don't know. It's. Uh, it just. Uh, I don't know. It's they let that to, one happen. That was. They weird. did. They it let was it weird, happen. Like watching them let that happen, but. Uh, 
Onward, look, it's not... The Nuggets can absolutely win a title from the three seed. They can. But I would have preferred to have home court against Minnesota. Yeah. 10 and out if of you 10 wanted times. the three seed, I just you don't want it to happen in a way like this, where it felt yeah. like it happened totally. to you. This totally. this happened to them. It wasn't like, oh, they decided this or that. All right, we got to take a break. We're venting it. We got to get over it. On the other side, let's break down some of the rest of this game. Later in the show, we'll start to talk about, okay, well, three seed. Uh, is it as bad <laughs> as it sounds? Is there actually a dude, world where it's okay? What the fuck? Three seed. Also, <laughs> hey, another, another, another thing off the table. 58 wins, kiss it goodbye. Know, dude, kiss it goodbye. <sighs> Is Michael Malone ever going to pass George Carl? I'm so... Oh, man. He might never. I'm so... Uh, it might it. never happen. I mean... Oh, I forgot we <laughs> what lost they coughed up too. tonight. What they coughed up tonight. Your front range Toyota stores are excited to begin our new partnership with DNVR. Toyota is the official vehicle of DNVR. Whatever type of vehicle you want, trucks, SUVs, 4Runner, what we call the official car of Colorado. Unofficial. I'm calling it the official. All right. <laughs> um, Toyota's great. 17 different models available for their trucks. They got the 2024 iconic Land Cruiser coming this spring. Uh, they also offer more low and zero emission vehicles combined than any other automaker. Uh, so they're giving customers numerous choices to reduce their carbon footprint. 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from as well in their fleet. SUVs also like the RAV4, the Grand Highlander, the 4Runner. Visit your front range Toyota stores at a location near you, AutoNation Toyota, Arapaho in Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Group Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of the Denver Nuggets and the official vehicle of DNVR. I've been having a lot of fun with a new app on my phone, Underdog Fantasy. It's the easiest place to, to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. And I'm all about these pick entries where there's a fixed pot and you are competing against basically other people making these picks all across the country. And you're just going higher or lower on stats. It's got a great search function, which makes it easy. Obviously for me, I'm just punching nuggets in, you know, Jokic in. You do have to have players from uh, different teams, so it's really fun for me to, to, all right, I think Jokic is getting this double-double, and you better believe I'm fading Jason Tatum. It's really easy. To, it fits very neatly into your agendas. You've been all over this. It's it's really simple, man, and I've been having some fun. I've been having some luck, too. I'm not going to lie. Sign up today with promo code DNVR. Get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant pick em special. In your lobby, for example, last week, they offered a pick of Jokic higher than just .5 points. They did another one on De'Aaron Fox tonight. I, I on that. I think he's going to score a point. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and don't forget to register with promo code DNVR to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick em special. You have to be 18 or older and present in a state or and present, excuse me, in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. Unbelievable here. So the Should we just start cussing some more? I know. It's kind of feel like it, man. <laughs> kind of feels good. Um, last time the Nuggets won 57 games, should they win their final game on Sunday? Which Who now knows? at this point, like, I mean, part of this goes, do you really think those other teams are going to lose? And if not, do you, you know, I mean, who knows? But let's say they get to 57 wins. Do you remember what seed the Nuggets were when they won 57 in 2013? Like the three or something. The three seed. The Nuggets, two time, the two best years the Nuggets have ever won, they still would be third best in their own conference. It's so shameful. It's so shameful. It always pissed me off that our franchise record for wins was yeah, a three seed. It was a three seed, yeah. And now it might be tied. Oh, actually, they did it twice. I don't, I don't even want to tie it anymore, to be honest. I want to lose this last game. And you lose to the baby. They don't deserve to You tie lose it. to the baby Thunder. And by the way, MVP, you know, being the one seed was part of this, like, I know nobody really cares, here really cares about the MVP or whatever, but Yoke, now Shea's going to be the one seed. You know, he's in that conversation. Luca's only maybe the four seed. So now you start to look at and say, is there really any difference between three and four? You know, like, I think Yoke's chances at the MVP actually take a bit of a plummet they after this one. They definitely do, yeah, for sure. Uh, which is wild. So all of this stuff now. Um, <laughs> let's get into the rest of the game here. Murray is as guilty, if not more, as Yoke. Yoke's the leader of the team, so I'm harder on him. 
His defense in the second half was as, as pathetic as anyone's. There was multiple easy baskets they got down the stretch where Murray just lost his guy. Including the last play of the including game. Including the last, well, the Devontae <laughs> Graham one. But yeah. I'm going to try a positive spin here, Wins. It's great to see him knock down shots that we expect him to take and make in the playoffs. And if we just go to the first half, he did have some shots that reminded me of last game where I'm like, that's the playoff Murray. If that game would have ended with a win, I'd be talking about Murray's back. He's looking good. I'm excited for him. So, I don't know. Try to square that one. No, you're right. 35 points, 14 of 26 shooting, 5 of 11 from 3. He was great tonight outside of the defense. And um, he did look like playoff Jamal Murray. He was hitting the types of threes that he takes and makes in the playoffs, you know? That little step back three where he's kind of turning to the side from the top of the key. That shot he loves, he hit that a couple times. Um, from two point range, he was really good as well. He's got a good bounce to his game right now. He's He's got a nice first step going. He looks pretty spry. He looks pretty healthy. Offensively, he was everything you could want you know, from him tonight. To get 35 points and only 29 minutes because it does seem like he's still on a minute restriction. He's not playing above 30. He's not staggering with the second unit. He's really just playing with the starters. And, you know, in the playoffs, obviously, that's going to change. But to get 35 points on a minute restriction and, and look as good as he did, it, it was a solid night for him. He looked I, great, dude. Murray looked incredible. I can't believe they lost this game with that performance from Jamal Murray. Well, the performance 35. defensively was as bad as well, it I know, was good but offensively. I, but I just, if you told me, like, Jamal scored 35, I was like, oh, okay. They, they clearly won that game. Yeah, it's uh, it's wild. I, I mean, like, the it just shows the focus, right? Like, Jamal very interested in shooting. He looked great. Not at all interested in defending. None of them were interested in defending. God, I, I'm like, dude, I'm like having a hard time processing thoughts. Like, this is just insane. On the bright side, Jamal Murray continues to light it up from three-point range, which I feel good about. And on high volume tonight, 5 of 11. I, I, I think you tweeted this out tonight, but I, I'm with you that most of these shots Murray's taking, I'm thinking it's going in long before it leaves his hand. So that feels great. I agree that his defense was not good tonight. His rebounding was subpar. He is not alone in that. And there are, probably, there are worse sinners in, in each respective category, I think. But... It was awesome to see him get going offensively. Sucks that it comes in a loss. But I, I like the way that Murray is playing offensively. I like how shot ready he is from three. And if those shots are falling, Denver's gonna be hard to guard. So there's some silver lining there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend it's a satisfactory one against the background of the loss. He really nice. He had good moves too. It wasn't even just the shot. He had a nice like Man, hesitation getting in the rim. Yeah. Finishes around Wemby. Beautiful. Like he had some stuff that again Beautiful. is why you buy the Nuggets as a this two man game. Why you buy it? We saw some of that tonight until it wasn't. Um, Aaron Gordon, second game back, thirteen points, four rebounds, four assists, one steal. How healthy did he look to you? He looks fine. He looked fine to me against Minnesota. He looked fine to me tonight. He looks good. Yeah. Not dunking it a whole lot last two games. Yeah, I feel like he's kind of tried to rein it in offensively these last couple. Just get ready for the playoffs. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, Maybe I think that, on him? that kind of was the story for everybody on the Nuggets. It's like they just weren't giving effort, like, to dunk. To When was the last time we had a f finale oop type of play? Well, we've only had two. We had them two in, like, three games, and that's when we coined it. Have not seen one since. They had a possession like that against the Wolves. It just wasn't in the fourth. But That's what I mean. We, of course, got the lob. The yeah. Murray to the lob. But it's a finale. Yeah, a finale for sure. I know. When it got close tonight, I was sitting there thinking, well, at least maybe we'll get a finale oop or whatever. Mike got the three in the quarter instead and missed it. I thought, ah, whatever. Yeah, that, that is not a yeah. finale no. play. <laughs> no, I'm saying that was the play I thought was going to be a finale oop. When they were dribbling it up, I was like, uh, okay, here's a finale oop. Instead, yep. it was a kick to the corner, yep. and they missed it. I thought AG also, though, was a culprit in the defense. Rebounding in particular. Yeah, the rebounding for and sure. Rebounding as well. He only grabbed four. And I just thought there were a couple possessions where he got cooked. Now, Devontae Graham is a point guard. He's small. He's shifty. Your power forward getting diced up by Devontae Graham is not the worst outcome. But given what we know that AG is capable of, I think I would frame it as definitely not playoff level defense from Aaron Gordon tonight. No. Yeah. So I, I like the way Gordon's been playing. I like the way he looks physically. But tonight, I think he takes some of the blame, too. I just 
The starters never locked in defensively the way they usually do when they turn these things around. And I think you could say that about all these guys, even Pope and Gordon. I really wonder what AG's thinking right now, though. Because he tried to sun Wembenyama. Like, he tried to go chest to chest with him and be like, bro, we're the world champion. Which is also You're weird. You're a 19-year-old rookie. Which is also weird because that's not really the Nuggets' energy. Uh-uh. Especially in a game like this. Against the Spurs, against Like, Wendy. in a high-intensity rivalry game against a Phoenix, against the Lakers. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if AG did something like that. But tonight, that was weird. Yeah. Um, let's move on. If Another silver lining from tonight, for me at least. The Booth Boys, a.k.a. Project Dynasty. I actually liked most of what I saw from both of those guys. Um, the intensity from p does wax and wane. Like He does have a little showmanship into him that I don't always love because, again, it's not his fault. But as the Spurs were making a comeback... There's a moment in time when it's like, hey, now is the like the serious time. You know, you don't need all the extra stuff. And it's not like a major thing. But that aside, I can't believe they only gave him one block and one steal. I feel like he had way more than that. Uh, but 6.6 6 rebounds. And then Christian Brown, same thing. Two of four from the three-point line. 11 points, three rebounds, three assists. Both of those guys, to me, continued, even in a loss, continued to look more like what I hope to see from them in the playoffs. That's a great silver lining, is that the bench looks... They look good in a way that you could see them doing in the playoffs. Like That's how they're going to be good in those games. They're not going to score 20 points, respectively. They can have those kind of impacts. I'm with you on Piwa. It's, it's, I think it's young. I think it, it's just a symptom of youth and nothing else, right? Of course. Uh, but, and I'm not even trying to go too hard on this. The tech sure seemed relevant in the end. They hit oh that tech, God. right? You lose this game. No, I think one. he missed it, Did actually. Did he miss it? Oh, thank goodness. I'm taking that back. Peyton, you were fine. <laughs> but there is a little bit of like... The loudness of the plays is one thing. Then there's also a moment in the game to sort of take a breath and start playing a little bit more in- intelligently, I guess, or controlled maybe is the word I'm looking for. That said, I do I do like when he gets in these little berserk mindsets of I'm going to block everything because he covers ground in a way very few guys do. I've never heard this song at the bar before. Well, you know this one. The yeah, it's not much of a bar banger. It's not, but it no. is a good jam. It fits this vibe a little bit. It does better. fit my vibe at the moment. The, uh, I've been loving the energy that P. Watt and Christian Brown have been playing with over these last couple of games. It feels to me like they are in a good headspace for the playoffs. For sure. It feels to me like they are locked into playoff mode. And um, like these last couple of games have honestly given me a lot more confidence about the second unit heading into the postseason. Like... I've said my theory before about how I think this is a bench that's more built for the playoffs in the regular season because of the staggering you get and just the defensive skill sets of Christian Brown and Peyton Watson and the shooting of Justin Holiday. Um, Reggie Jackson's kind of separate from that, but I just think those three guys, they're at a good level right now. Their mindset's in the right place. They're playing with good energy, and um, I'm... I'm somewhat confident in the second unit in a playoff setting right now. I'm, dude, like, none of this, this game doesn't mean anything except for well, it, it just something. fucking sucks. Like, it means it's something the, seeding. It means, some, I, I mean, as far as like who the Nuggets are. Like, okay, this doesn't I, I, actually I, I, give you insight into anything about this team other than they can take things unseriously, that they can let their foot off the gas. I mean, if you really want a silver lining here, it's probably good for them to get punched in the mouth, like yeah. in this way, going into the playoffs. I disagree. To get like locked in, to be like, I don't want to feel this again. Um, like, I'm, I don't prefer it, but like you could look at that and say like, all right, don't ever be that casual again. Like they showed you who they were the game prior against Minnesota. This game, they th- they were up 20. They got complacent. They were like, we're going to win. I mean, we're obviously going to win. Then like they just let the Spurs just kind of play around. And then they looked up. They were like, oh, God, like we got to fucking go back. We got to turn it back on. And it was too late. But like. It's just, it's devastating from a standpoint of what this team has worked for, the position to get in over the course of the year, to cough it up in such a ridiculous way to a team that literally hurt themselves by winning tonight. Um, and it is, and it just became, it, it, it all happened because they just weren't trying. It sucks. I could, you could, 
it, it'd be one thing if you're like, wow, okay, well, we got a lot to learn here. But it's like, what you need to learn is, is that you got to be a professional every game. I don't think this is the time for learning that. Though, I know. Right? I'm not this, preferring it, but I'm just saying. It's game 81 of the season. You just came off this unbelievable win against the Timberwolves. Lessons like these were for months and months ago. It's yeah. not a long-term lesson of like how the team needs to refocus. But it's like a re it's like bro, I think this might take them out of focus like for the last game and even for like a game one of, of the playoffs. I honestly do. Like uh, I feel like there's a better chance they would be more focused if they won these last two heading into I think the playoffs. I'm, I think I'm with Harrison on this one in that I really feel like the lesson you're talking about is beneath them. So the fact that it is co- like that that could be a silver lining is it's like a, yeah, but that lesson that, is prob- maybe the wrong word. It's more just like a reminder that they they are not infallible, that they are not invincible. Like it's not a, it, it, they don't they're not learning something about themselves. It's just like bro, you have to show up. I just think there's a long enough gap between the end of the season and the start of the playoffs that how you finish is kind of for me. I don't I don't put a ton of stock into it. But the the seeding part does matter. Like that you just, does carry you do over. You do want to have home court. Sure. You do want to have home court. Um, punt on that, and it's painful. All right. On the other side, let's talk about. All right, three seed. So what does that look like? What's the path? What's a realistic expectation here? Who are they going to face? Most likely, we'll get to all of that in the final segment or in the third segment. This episode brought to you by Manscaped. Did you know one man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? In fact, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer amongst men aged 15 to 35. Uh, With April being National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friends over at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer. You can use promo code NUGGETS20 for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Pick up the lawnmower 5.0. Yes, they're up to the 5.0. I think we've been here since, we've been with Manscaped since the 3.0, definitely. At least the 3.0. Maybe even earlier. That thing was dangerous, it turns out. We we had no idea. Now we're up to the lawnmower (laughs) 5.0 Ultra. Oh, man. That thing, honestly, is awesome, I have to say. Like, I've... uh, I've not manscaped per se, but I have scaped and then I've cut my sideburns and stuff. It's a good little trick. No, it's awesome. The new one actually comes with yeah, a make new sure you're washing the uh, blade yes. attachment. Yes. And it's the best one yet. Dude, it's awesome. Yeah. Manscaped, it's a really good product, like no doubt. You get the shipment from Manscaped, you open it up, it's really well put together. Ugh. Different blades, carrying case, tons of stuff in there. Uh, so pick up the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Use the code NUGGETS20 um, for 20% off plus free shipping. Manscaped.com. It is Miller time, baby. Oh, my God, is it Miller time. And while other companies keep upgrading or they just keep, you know, there's new iterations, right? The 1.0, the 2.0, the 3.0. Miller Lite's only ever had the 1.0, baby. (laughs) Yeah, they don't need a 2.0. They don't need a (laughs) 5.0. It's the original (laughs) light beer, same taste. Same quality that you have grown familiar with over the years. It's still the best one. More of the taste you want. Less of the stuff you don't. Pairs great with Nuggets wins. Pairs better with Nuggets losses on a Friday night than you think. You can you can simply drink a Miller Miller Light, declare it Miller time, and, and kind of take yourself mentally out of the loser's lounge. You have that power. Miller Light is amazing. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Light. Tastes like Miller time to get Miller Light delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash DNVR, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. You guys know about Miller Lite. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. All right, back here, segment three, DNVR Nuggets podcast. Throw us a like if you want. If you're not feeling it, you don't have to. Uh, nuggets now fall to three. So what does that mean? How? What is the consequence? What is the fallout of this? Well, for starters, if you finish in the three, and by the way, Minnesota plays the Suns, on Sunday, is there, the Suns kind of own Minnesota. So there's a good chance that they drop that one. Denver's playing Memphis. They couldn't lose two terrible games in a row, could they? The Thunder have a guaranteed win against Dallas coming up in their they're final resting, game. Because right? Dallas is resting everybody. So the Thunder likely now to be the one seed. The Nuggets, two or three. They could be either one, two or three. But if they are the three seed, if the Timberwolves take care of business and they get home court against Denver in the second round, Denver's first round matchup right now is looking like it is likely to be the Pelicans. It could be the Suns. 
But it would be one of those two teams. In fact, I think either way, you're looking at now more likely to be one of those two teams, whether you're the two seed or the three, because they're the six and, and, again, the Suns would have to win their playing game, which, again, yeah. is no guarantee. But, you know, at the moment, they would have home court, at least in that game. So let's just say New Orleans, first things first, not the worst. Not the worst if you play New Orleans in the first round. I actually think New Orleans is dangerous, but they're flawed, and I don't think they match up with Denver very well. So at least that might be okay, D-Line. I guess. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, I, no, I'm not, I'm sorry. Like, I, I know you're, you're in the chat. No, I know you're trying to do a show here. I'm sorry. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I'm like going through well, the stages of grief. Are I am you like, trying to do a show? <laughs> I'm trying to like process this. I'm trying to look at this from a, okay, what does this actually mean? Do you want to talk I, about the topic I just threw out or do we well, want to? Well, I'm go getting there. Okay. All right. He's getting You there. know what? Got it. He's there. getting there. When, what do you think? T- the, the Pelicans. The Pelicans are a team the Nuggets should take care of easily. I think this would be a five-game series. That's what my pick would be. I agree. The thing is, though, I was talking to a player in the Nuggets locker room after the win against the Timberwolves. Not going to say who it was, but it was a rotation player. It was a guy in the rotation, in the playoff rotation. And I was asking him, who are the toughest teams for you guys to play in the West? Like, who's going to be the toughest playoff opponent? And, you know, we were talking about Minnesota. Yeah, they're probably the toughest. The second team he mentioned to me in terms of toughest playoff matchups for the Nuggets was the Pelicans. Really? It was. Interesting. And I was completely thrown off by that because I was, like, trying to guess. I was like, the Suns? He was like, no. Nah. Like, the Clippers? He was like, no. Nah. Huh. The Pelicans. I, I kind of – I think it's a funny spot where – you could go through it on paper and technically argue that the Pelicans kind of match up better with Denver than other teams, in my opinion. But it, but it never plays out that way. Like, their best players aren't nearly good enough to be in a series head-to-head with Denver's best players, in my opinion. You could talk yourself into, oh, they've got shooters over here. They've got length on the perimeter. Who guards Zion? Like, uh, But at the end of the day, like Jokic always crushes that team. Always. And so, I just don't yeah. think they would. So the reasoning that this player gave... To okay. me, was a couple, couple different things. First, like they have really good defenders at different spots on the floor. They do, they do. You know the Herb Joneses, the Dyson Danielses of the world. Just not at their center spot. That's the hook. right. Yeah. And then I brought up the fact that, like, look, Yoke always cooks Valanciunas, and he goes, "Yeah, he does, but he cooks everybody." But Valanciunas can still put in twenty on the other end, and he's gonna make Yoke work defensively. I don't, I don't even know how true that is. Although he does score, but guess who else scores? Every center. I'm going to give you guys a spoiler alert. Dev, I don't know if you've ever picked this up, always takes the opposing center, and it always hits. Yeah. Tonight, right. that would have been Mam- Mamu. Right. He ate tonight. I bet his over-under was seven points. He had, what, 23? Yeah. So the, he was saying that, like, Valanciunas can make Yoke work a little bit defensively. And then the final piece was the 21. Brandon Ingram piece. You know, he's coming back from injury. I'm, of course, like, the biggest Brandon Ingram non-believer ever i just like don't think he's a winning player um but there's still some like intrigue there i think in the locker room of like oh this guy can just flat out put the ball in the hoop yeah i mean it was was just interesting to hear that perspective because i feel like the nuggets would crush the pelican that's great perspective yeah that's interesting they i mean they they should i mean they just have the best player it's um it is wild, though. I mean, like, Zion Williamson is an absolute wild card. Brandon Ingram is a wild card. I agree with you. He's like, he doesn't have what, it, to be a number one, like, he does not have that. But, like, he can get hot. Like, he gets hot. He actually, exactly, he's yeah, one right. of those guys that makes nine in a row. Exactly. And then, I mean, we saw, we've seen him suit up for Team USA and be, like, a, a total fly in the ointment loser. Like, um, it's just, uh, you know, like, I don't, f- I don't feel differently I mean, once this the, the lights are off here and I've had time to process my immediate emotions, like I won't feel differently about the Nuggets than I did after the Minnesota game as far as who they are. I do not like the fact that they just cost themselves and gave themselves a more difficult path and that they will not have home court advantage. I think there's a lot of teams clustered in that lower tier that you could that are kind of the same level of difficulty for the Denver Nuggets. It's like you can kind of talk yourself into all of them. Like the Suns can get hot as fire. Yeah. The the Pelicans have guys that can like 
be very physical and can also bring finesse. Like, see, you know, like they, they, they're just a lot. All the teams clustered there are kind of clustered for the for the, the reason that they're all similar in a lot of ways. So, so I don't fear them, but I'm just like, for me, I'm just like mourning the 70, the 58 win season. I'm mourning yeah, the history, right the there. history that the Nuggets coughed up. I'm mourning the fact that this is going to like creep into the MVP conversation. I'm mourning the fact that like, they're not, the we this season was all for nothing. Like they, we know that they're good enough to win it again. You know, there was so much of the season that was about, like, just get to the playoffs, you know? And it, the Nuggets looked as though they were going to defy that. They were actually going to be better than the rest of the West. They were going to turn in the best season that, that they ever have. It was going to be meaningful. And now it was like, all right, just get to the fucking playoffs. Fine, you're the three seed. Like, God damn it. I think the story with the Pelicans series is just making sure it stays short. Like, you're winning that series, in my opinion. And I don't think that's anywhere near a hot take. But you want your first rounder to be a five game series. You really do, in my opinion. It's a long, it's a long run. And that was part of Denver's maturity over the years, was whittling these early series down from seven game battles to okay, now really didn't happen until the title year, but now we're ready to win quickly. You know, that goes a long way to dominating all the way through. I do think the Pelicans are good enough that you have that conversation. Like I hope this doesn't go six games. I don't but they have a good roster. The Pelicans have a good roster. But I do, but I also think they always inspire. They inspire good basketball out of the Nuggets. I think those matchups are usually good. But Jokic dominates them. Jokic dominates them every time, and I wouldn't expect that to be any. So different. Here's the thing: I, don't, I wanted the Pelicans when the Nuggets were the one seed. I wanted right. the Pelicans to be the eight. So I'm not worried about this. This first round one. Look, all due respect, the Nuggets are the reigning champs. They should not be afraid of the six seed. So Absolutely. that's that's my default position. My other position though is that the Timberwolves are the toughest one, is the toughest matchup. And you just sent a message to them last game of like, yeah, this is what happens when we play hard and in our building and all this stuff. And then you fumble it to where round two is now you're going to have to go to Minnesota. Yep. Going on the road in the second round, Yep. it's different between going on the road in the third round. Like, okay, you were the two seed and now you do this. But if you have to go on the road right away and play at Minnesota, we wanted to delay that matchup, you know, if, if anything, and now it might have to happen have to happen almost immediately. And to me, that's where the bill comes due. Who knows if Minnesota even gets if they do play the Suns in the first round, which is possible. That's, you know, the Suns can beat Minnesota. I, the, the Suns are not they, better than them, but they own them. They beat them by twenty every time they play each other. They just it's a matchup that for whatever reason they're very comfortable with. But even if they don't. Minnesota then gets home court advantage in that yep. series, and that's so massive, man. It's just it, so it, massive. It is. It is something we fought for all season long. We meaning me. I did it all season long. Yeah. And uh, you yeah, know, to cough it up like this is just it's unconscionable. Yeah. What about that one, Win? Because that's the real take. Again, we did all that time on the Pels, but that's the big deal to me. Is as early as like two and a half, three weeks from now, Denver could have to go on the road to Minnesota for games one and two, and. Now you're talking about even at a minimum, you think, okay, well, we still think Denver will win, but now do they win in six instead of five? You're playing an extra game. At best case scenario, it takes an extra game now because you had to play extra games on the road. Like, this stuff adds up. The Nuggets are, are so good and so comfortable and even a little, and even a healthy amount of cocky at home right. where I really feel like it makes such a difference. It was such a big variable that Denver had in its favor last season. Yep. Game one at home setting the tone in every series. First round last year, 2-0. Yeah, but set the tone early in game one. Uh, Suns. Phoenix, same We're ready thing. for this. 2-0, and we're ready for this. Game one against the Lakers. Blowout until they stopped trying in the second half. Game one against the Heat, dominated them then again. It was so important in the run last year. And yes, the Nuggets don't need home court this year as badly as they did last year. They've been through it. They've been on the run before. They won on the road last year um, in every series that they had to, including in the finals in game two. Or sorry, in game three in a series that was tied in 1-1. So it's not as imperative to get home court all the way throughout as it was last year. But the Nuggets are just so good that it does matter. And I was in Minnesota last year for that series. That was a loud arena in game three. That was a fired up crowd. And um, that place, if the Nuggets have to go there, will be even louder in the second round, game one, if that happens. No. Dude, there's some, some of these takes, man. 
from like, us or from the no, chat? From them, they're like, oh man, this means the Celtics are going to win. This didn't change anything. Like, the Celtics would have had the higher seed regardless, even if the Nuggets. This does. You realize if the Nuggets make it out of the West, they still would have been not. Wouldn't have had the home court advantage. Of, the like, irony it, of this it is, doesn't affect that. <laughs> the irony of this would really be if the Timberwolves lose. Either on Sunday or in the first round, and then Denver ends up just never playing a home game. Like they're always home court anyway, <laughs> right, right. which is still on the table. Again. Very much on the table. That's. I mean, listen. Like any of the four <laughs> top seeds, in my opinion, can lose. Denver, the least likely still to lose, but Clippers, Timberwolves, and Thunder could all lose in the first round because it's that flat, in my opinion, top to bottom. The Nuggets are the best team easily in the Western Conference. I, I can't be talked off this. Like they, I watch them. I, I hope you're not talked off. I watch them match up against a team that they saw as a competition that they viewed as their equal, where they gave their all last game. And it was so impressive, so awe-inspiring. It just, the Nuggets showed you that they can fuck around is what they showed you. That's... Which is, you know, it means sadly, that they're human it's beings. sadly, I think, going to be... Because this is like, they're in their prime right now, the Nuggets. I, they're not... It's not a lesson they're going to learn. Every team has their yeah, little no. personality weaknesses. And unfortunately, one of this is this exact thing. They, We always laugh. They just give you just enough to win every time. But every t- now and then, they fumble the bag like this. Like they did tonight. All right, let's take a break. On the other side, I'm told we have a lot of super chats. Whoa, sicko chats? Holy smokes, A lot smokes, of sicko dude. chats. If you guys are looking for tickets to concerts, shows, sporting events, hit up the Game Time app. Uh, Nuggets playoff tickets. You'll be able to get those on the Game Time app. Abs playoff tickets. Man, you those know what? two will, might be happening. Will be happening at the same exact time. They'll be on the Game Time app. Miroslav flies in on Saturday night. One or two seats tomorrow. Your- no, a week. Okay. A week from I was going to say. But uh, oh, almost a lock if you're the one or two seed to play Sunday, not Saturday. Three and four seeds usually will play, or will play then because they were locked up first. You don't have to wait for the playing game. So Miros, the Nuggets might have just cost Miroslav game one. Oh, no. They should be ashamed That's of That's the biggest. It honestly here. is a bummer to fly all the way out here. He was just so certain they would be a one or two seed. You know? Wow. Oh, so tough. Oh, my God. Jokic should personally buy Miroslav courtside tickets to game two. He should. He should. Uh, you can also get Rockies tickets on the game time app. I heard the Rockies won tonight. They Shout did. out to them. They did. They took the, mo- the Nuggets mojo. <laughs> uh, they got these great last minute deals where you can save up to 60% buying last minute tickets for sport- sports, concerts, comedy, theater, shows, whatever it might be. They got flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing as well. Terms apply, but if you create an account and redeem code DNVR, you get $20 off your first purchase. Create an account, redeem code DNVR for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price is guaranteed. There are a lot of financial institutions out there. Good news is you don't need to remember them all. Just this one, Premier Members. Credit Union, they're not a bank, which means they do things differently, like putting you first with higher savings, interest, and lower loan rates. It's an organization that serves your community with PMCU. You get local branches, friendly tellers, and the tools you need to save smarter, like your new, like their new high-yield savings account, or in 5% APY on your first $2,000 with their reverse-tier money market. When you become a new member at PMCU, you'll get $200. You just have to open up a checking account and sign up for e-statements. It's that easy. This will be your best money move yet. Head to becomepremier.com to find out more. All right, let's head into the... Sicko Chats, a.k.a. the Toyota Supra Chats, a.k.a. Oh, the Super Chats. Boy, oh boy. Teenage Dirtbag Chats. It's really hard not to sing this song during the ad break. All right, here sing we go. It. Here we it's go. It's easy when you don't know the words, so I'm, I'm having yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy for me. Okay. Wilson the Ghost, Overreaction Central in this chat. Six and three in road playoff games last year. Rest starters against the Grizzlies and we'll be fine. There you go. All right, I like a little optimism. Hey, for this next one, can I have a guest reader? Can we get a guest reader for this next one? I can't see it. It's kind of far away. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, who's this one from? Can you read it I for don't me? No. Um, read it in like girl, a real. Some girl named Spencer Hayes. Super read chat. It. Thank you so that's much. That's definitely not a girl. That's a bot or something. Yeah, that's a bot for sure. Read it in a real <laughs> like, you know, like a, a dumb voice or something. Yeah, yeah. Just make like fun of like whoever it is that said this one. Just make fun of. Uh, if you listen closely, you can hear me sobbing downstairs in the background. You don't look so It's actually a like dead lie. You're, you're, yeah. you're up here. That's true. I don't know who that was. Spencer always has a good... Thank you, Spencer. I was, of course, Spencer. She always has good energy, though. You know what? Until today. Until today. Your dark soul. 
astray. I'm going to take a page out of D-Line's book and throw myself into oncoming traffic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even that know. That was a real, a real, left, real skirt. <laughs> if I'm, I'm lucky, oh, I can't read that. <laughs> I don't know if I can read. If I'm lucky. All right, yeah. Big honey, can someone talk me off the ledge? Don't think my mental can take this loss. Hello, Nug Life, my old friend. Eh, that's not Nug Life. Uh, hey, no, listen, no, you, you let, you let people get him out. Nug Life? Yeah, yeah. They're just, <laughs> you think <laughs> this is Nug Life? Listen, <laughs> okay, like on. these yeah. feelings you guys all have, they're real, but they're not real. Yeah. yeah. Just you get them out. Like, At get the a, same time, I also agree with this one. Truly pathetic. <laughs> yep. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Of course. I mean, that I agree one's with real. That's, that's accurate. It's a beautiful middle ground. But Nug Life, the Nuggets. 56 with Lady Yeah, I know, Jam. but it was. We don't really speak of Nug Life anymore. It's dead. It's dead. It's well, dead. Nug Life is championship. Well, now it's different. Yeah, it's been reborn. We, we. Us Good old nostalgic it. Nug Life, says oh, Joe Clem. <laughs> Guys, come on. <laughs> what what Nug Life means is. Than this. What Nug Life means is. Going into the Nug Life is dead. While we're live. It's dead. What Nug Life means is disappointment. They're just uh, hearkening back to an era of disappointment. This is disappointing. We're no. stronger than this, guys. Nug Life is still dead. Mike. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mikey Nietes, Nuggets fumbling the one seed was like acing a test, but forgetting to put your name on it. Oh. <laughs> no, not mad, fuming, just really disappointed. Yeah. That's a good, great chat. I agree. That was a really good one. Andrea uh, Va Valerio Murphy. Hey, that's our girl. We saw her today. Came oh, out to Legal yeah, Pete for us. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah. You fumbled the super chat, I think. <laughs> I think you fumbled the super I chat. I think she's got another one coming oh, okay, up. Okay, there you All go. Right, cool. <laughs> Let's hear uh, it right now. <laughs> Take two. Uh, Murphy's Man, at DNVR bar team, via homie. illegal Pete's. Turns out we are bad luck, Adam and Dylan. Oh my God! You're the Mur right. The Murphys are zero and three at the DNVR bar. Bro. That and we made them come today, too. This is wild. So they were telling us before that they were 0-2 when coming to the bar. What, the Nuggets what, were do, up big. Do, do we, we, we know what those late. two games were? I don't remember. I don't uh, remember. Oh, my God. We that made is them so show up because we said it's a, they're going to they win came today. To, they're the sweetest people, man. Gave us heat, supported us, came out. Uh, it was great. Hung out she with them. She won the raffle, too. <laughs> Nothing but great stuff. I can't believe it. You might be right, actually. I got to be honest. This one, I'm a little... You, get, you guys curses? actually cannot come for the playoffs. Sorry about all that hyping we did. Zane Bochia, odds go down to win it all. More money for me. I love that attitude right that, there. Yeah, hey, that's, that's, actually, actually that's actually dope. That's, that's actually that's, great. That, there is the true silver there line and the gold we, we line and the it. green line. That's the smuggest energy I needed. That is Ulysses what we Ventura, this loss cost Jokic the MVP? I don't think so, personally. Um, No, but it did cost. Bro, you know what it cost? Here's what it cost. Nick Wright, his righteous indignation. Now he gets to go be self-righteous. I know that's, it is fine. I'm right. just saying, but it's annoying. Yeah, I'm, we I'm, want all of our foes vanquished, and like, it was more fun when he was saying how wrong he was. I know, but sometimes it's fun when your foes writhe and see. Uh, you know, Ken Patterson, Pewat, one verse five on defensive end. Shake my head. Hey, he brought his. He he tries. He plays hard. Big Namek, I don't usually fume over regular season games, but being outclassed and outclutched by the scrubs is hard to shake. Thanks, as always, for the catharsis, fellas. Well, I don't feel cathartic. I still feel angry. I've, yeah, I'm, I think I need another hour on this show. Dude, I'm gonna, right, it's going to be a rough one for me. It's going to be a rough night for me. I'm mad, man. I'm really fucking mad. I really am. <laughs> I mean, like, I, this... Like, 58 I put, wins. This team belongs to be on their own in infamy. I, like, I, I think they about this had, team it too, was much, so perfect, too long. Man. Yes, I know. He's, like, I'm mad, man. Bubbles I'm, buzzer beater. Not even Jordan McRae would have played that bad. Man, yes, that's he so would've. true. That was good, man. That's good. Mahesh, the, the ugly. Are, this game, the bad... Losing number one in wins record, the good seeing D line and meeting the fellas. Mesh, Mesh, great to meet you, Mesh is the the man. He's uh, he works for be a good person. We obviously did a, 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 a collab with them. We love that brand. We rep it all the time. Harrison especially. Uh, if you've not been to be a good person, check it out. They have, also have a, a dope store downtown in uh, Lodo. Hey, I mean, cool uh, guy, Rhino. man. I was glad. Yeah, Mahesh good, is good the best. to meet you today. He's Shout the out best. Mahesh. Yeah, what else we got, Kale? You, Nelson Reed. Don't think they was running from the one seed, but maybe Jokic doesn't want his third MVP and was trying to give Luka's first. <laughs> he should have no, started just, a couple months earlier, guys. He He's like minus like, 5,000. Yeah, he just didn't yeah. feel like trying at the He's end. He's winning. I like the theory, but I don't. There's no. That's the thing is that there's no... There's no, they're not looking at this from on high and scheming. They just fucked around. Super dope hip hop. Can't believe Nugzel, but 20 year old Wemby, January birthday, just like us, Adam. An alien with insane trajectory and healthy. Last two months, he's averaging 24, 12, five, and five with five block shots and two steals per game. What, what I'll give you, D line, is that I think his offense could go, I, th I think it's going to be good, but will it be like 
all time great. I don't know. But his defense, man, it doesn't matter. His defense right now is overwhelming. I couldn't agree with that more. Okay. So his like floor is defensive player of the year. I, feel I, like. I agree with that also. Yeah. I agree with that also. My that's, that's my high. my thing on the no, but the thing is, is like people are like he's gonna be the best player ever. I'm like uh, not unless he changes the way he plays. Be the best player ever is that's all. That's the a, people, a, I, that's, that should be the best, boldest take for no matter who somebody, you're. No, but somebody like I, I, it was like, is he gonna be the best player of his generation? Stuff like I'm like, I, maybe like I've got to see. Him. He, he's also 20. He did have a great defensively. I, I just think defensively, his floor is like eight defensive player of the year awards. And yeah, I like, Rudy, like Rudy Gobert. Or Gobert has like four. He's like, his floor right now is like Gobert's. Like where he is right now, I think is Gobert. They're in the race right. already, and, yeah. And, so that's he's, why I but think. But he's that, already 100 times the offensive player of Rudy Gobert. But I, he, the point, I, my large, I just don't think he plays like, yeah, I, I, you're going to laugh because he won today. I don't think he plays winning basketball in that he. Doesn't put himself. He puts. He's more interested in shooting from three, which he drained for, missed two. Uh, he shoots thirty percent on the year. It bit the Nuggets today. Absolutely. I just. He might be. To your point, he might be Porzingis on offense. Which this is, is what not I'm the over. But, but defensively, uh, he's Rudy Gobert on stilts. He so just. I know, but he just has so insane. many physical gifts. I hope that he learns to oh. use them ra- rather than to push them away. Um. Maximo, the Portuguese dude. Wow, thanks, I guess. This guy was a Wolves fan. Oh, that's fan. right. He's the Wolves guy. Glad my team is the one seed, but not sure how I feel about this. Did they actually think a Popovich team would lay down and quit? To be fair, they did that in the playoffs once against the Nuggets. They absolutely so that, did. To be fair, they Popovich They fully did, laid down and just, fully quit. Do you remember refused that? to call a timeout. That was the funniest because uh, Greg Popovich is on the sideline saying something, and he's like, fuck it. <laughs> he literally also, goes like this to the series. Covering those pressers that whole series. Totally quit. He totally He's quit. Like, you know what? <laughs> Forget this, man. Ghazi Benghazi, Nuggets Edition. How to lose number one seed, fifty eight wins and MVP at once. I, I don't think he lost the MVP, guys. I think I dude, I'm telling you though. There are pe- even Matt Moore is trying to push the like know. not Jokic agenda. There's just these people that, just, that should just they, reinforce your own confidence and your belief. No, but it's not about me. Uh, again, it's not my like I don't have a vote. I'm saying that there's always this push. To take it away from whoever the leader is at the he end, always, and Yoke just right. gave him, yes. gave yes. everyone, not yes. just gave you know everyone a great, a great one. Isn't there a consensus that March and April basketball doesn't mean anything? I know, Yet, I know, I know. It means everything in the MVP race I for know, some reason. I know. That's kind of funny. To I just think it was like if he was minus 120 coming into tonight. This is a discussion, but it was. It was, I think, minus it's, five thousand. Yeah, guys, it was locked up. It was locked. up. I'm just telling you the narrative. The birds are chirping because, and they're getting confidence yeah. from each other. Perfect you know? with like, the playoffs right around the corner. Let's do it again. If you guys didn't That's learn so your true. lesson, Chuck Dickwell's burner. What's worse than stubbing your toe in the dark? Losing to the tanking Spurs when you were up by twenty. Frustrating shit show of a fourth quarter. Deep breath. Parade will be sweeter. Winning it as a third seed. John Tucker? Oh, Big Namek. This game was brown, so we should flush it down. Well, you definitely should flush this one down. John Tucker, Wolves fan here. Really like your guys' show. Thanks, man. Hey, I think yeah. the Nuggets hurt the Wolves and themselves. Neither team wants to be on the same side of the bracket. Oh, well, see you in round two. How? It was mm. so close to being perfect, man. I Dude, that's actually... You would have had awesome. The- like we have a Wolves fan that watches this show. That is a very big compliment, and we Two. appreciate you. And listen, we actually are. We're we all, Timberwolves respecters. We are full Timberwolves we respecters. Dude, we we're love gonna freaking Connelly. hate him, though. I'm telling you, we're gonna hate him. Hate him. Yes. We're gonna hate him. It's gonna be contentious, man. And it then is. back to our other Wolves fan, Maximo, the Portuguese dude. Again, one of two I mean, things Anthony will happen Edwards from here. The Spurs gave the Nuggets a wake up call and just pissed off the whole team. Or you lose in the first round. There's no middle ground. Sorry. Big Namek, super sticker, Prince. Skinner saying pathetic. <laughs> I didn't know they had that sticker. That's a good sticker. Joe Hicks. Best thing about not having home court advantage is being able to complete a 4-0 sweep on your home court. Got to stay positive. <laughs> you know what? All right. I like it. I'm with it. I'm, that's the energy I the needed right Nuggets there. The Nuggets are still entirely capable of going 16-0 in the playoffs. They are. <laughs> that's all on the table. And we'll, we'll finish things be on up. the road for three of the four series, though. That's crazy. Uh, a stray... Very overreaction, I know, and sorry about that. <laughs> but can we seriously talk about Reggie trying to challenge Wemby again? Again. After failing several times before, it's what like the memory of a goldfish. 
That I agree with. I don't think Reggie's a guy that really, like, at, you know, learns. He's, well, I'm going to say Reggie plays like a young player. It's true. And he's a very, he's been in the league for a long he, time. Reggie has his style yeah. and he's sticking right. to it. That's yeah. true. There's not like, well, last possession, this went this way. Yeah. That's not really, I don't know if that's happening. <laughs> I saw it in the film. <laughs> Vibes down so bad, man. What a so bummer. Bad, dude. What Guys, a bummer. This is a vibe apocalypse. That's, that's, uh, Let's this go. is where you live. Let's, let's Here, go to the playoffs. Where, let's go live. to the playoffs. I can't wait. Man. You're like the raccoon in the trash. Yeah. You're just like, you know we, what? Like dude, an we, old hat. Right I love what, uh-huh. what, we, what we truly wait, we have suck? going for us, what we truly have going for us is like Vote said, there is a while between now and when the playoffs starts. Yeah. And we will shake this off entirely. But this is uh, this is a shot. This is like when you eat one of those. Uh, have you ever had those... Um, Jelly bellies with, that are Harry Potter based, and some of them are good and some of them are bad. And oh, you can eat the one. Jelly that, beans, yeah. Yeah, like you, you get, get like a you, cherry, and then you get like a grass. Yes, yeah. and, but you don't know which one you're going to get, and like you just eat, you're like, oh my That's god, it ruins your night yeah. entirely. But we know th- that there's so much more in front of this Ned for Nuggets team, but this sucks. Dude, I'm I mad. heard a story the other day that there are people out there that like cookies that are poop cookies. I don't remember where I heard this. Well, Probably from your the daughter? NBA, NBA oh, players? The apparently NBA players? I'm curious about Did she muted him, right? <laughs> she yeah, muted him. Uh, no, no, after, hold up, hold up, hold up. Was I that want to say podcast? Uh, I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm curious. Um, that doesn't sound like it's real. <laughs> This is Curious Mike Pod. All right. Damn, um, that's tough. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> Nobody's picking up on the Curious Mike Pod. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> hold on. I do want to say this. Vote, you brought me around. Here's how we get out on this. So Yoke might lose the MVP because someone else was better. And now Nuggets are a three seed. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're not. They're frauds. What's that I'm hearing? Hold the on a second. Is this, oh, they can never win. They're going to have to go What's on the road. What's that I'm hearing? Might be a really comfortable spot for us. You Are you telling what? me Whatever. Fraud City's back? Fraud City's back, everybody. Okay. We'll see you on Sunday. I can't wait. Watch along on Sunday, too. We'll see you then.